I'm out on Greenfield Lake here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and today I finally get to test out the pack motor to see how it performs on basically flat calm water. Stay tuned. Well, it's finally happened. Spring has sprung and I'm able to get out here on the water and specifically I want to test out how this pack motor performs on a still water lake. I've got my speedometer app going here so I can check to see how fast it's going to push my heavy kayak. Total weight, including myself, I don't know, probably about 275 pounds. Now before we get into any kind of speed testing, we've got to talk about something called hull speed. Hull speed is the maximum theoretical speed that your boat can produce without getting up on plane. Now there are boats like racing kayaks and things like that that are very long and narrow that can potentially exceed their hull speed by up to 100%. But that certainly doesn't apply to this big fat fishing kayak. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pedal drive and the speedometer to see what is the maximum speed I can achieve at the highest rate of pedaling that I'm comfortable doing. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and get going. And we'll do that right now. And then we'll get this pack motor in gear and see what it can do for us. My standard pace looks like it's around 2.4, 2.5. So let's deploy the pack motor and see what that does for us. Now this is really easy to deploy. Basically you just pull a pin and it drops in the water. It comes with this handheld device right here that is basically your safety device where you can still control the kayak if you happen to fall overboard and it's going to turn off by itself when it gets far enough away from this. So I'm going to push it straight ahead and let's see what my speed is. According to the speedometer, it looks like I can get about 2.7 miles an hour out of this with it set straight down. I'm going to go ahead and deploy my pedal drive system and see if I can improve on the speed if I add pedaling. Well, it looks like I can easily get up to 3.7, 3.8 miles an hour if I add a little human power to the power of the motor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the motor from being straight down to being angled out to simulate uh, a situation where you're in shallower water and you wanna minimize the risk of hitting your trolling motor. Okay, that angle has it barely under the water. So it's basically just underneath my hull. So I have minimum risk of hitting anything at that angle and it looks like i can achieve a consistent speed of about 3.2 miles an hour let's see what happens when i add some human power at a gentle stroke to the motors out at an angle i'm easily up to 3.5 to 3.7 miles an hour that's pretty fast for this big beast of a kayak. Let's talk about how to use the controller here a little bit. Pushing it straight makes the kayak go straight. I'm keeping my rudder straight so it doesn't interfere with anything. If I push it all the way to the side, I get a zero angle turn. I can turn on a dime. And if I go up at an angle, I get a, a gentle turn with some forward motion. One of the huge advantages of the pack motor is you can do a 360 turn without really moving anywhere so let's go ahead and try that out you're gonna to have to look at the background but i can tell you i'm spinning right on a dive my kayak is not moving forward at all i can see how this would be a huge advantage when you're in a tight spot and you just need to maneuver a little bit without having to go bounce into weeds and trees and things like that. Let's go the other way. This is really cool. I think what you're gonna have to do if you get this motor is tune it to your boat. You're gonna have to figure out which angle provides the best amount of thrust and speed 
for your particular hull style. And I've proven that if I just want to pedal a little bit, well, I can get another half mile an hour. So the question you have to ask of this motor versus a trolling motor that has a greater amount of thrust and will push you closer to your maximum hull speed is what are the advantages and disadvantages of that. With a traditional trolling motor, I'm not going to be able to do the pivot turn that I can do with this. The traditional trolling motor will move me faster. The trolling motor I have, I think consistently did about 3.6 to 3.7 miles an hour, but that sucker was big and heavy. And it kind of made my kayak lopsided. I had to make sure that I sat over here on the right-hand side to offset the weight of the heavy motor pulling down on the left. In addition, the heavy trolling motor was very difficult to pull up if I was about to go over an oyster bed. I don't know how you're going to do that if your motor's way back in the rear of your, your kayak. I think you'd have to get out, go back there, tip it up, get back in and keep going. With these, I can just hit this little toggle right here and quickly rotate the arms up and down. So that's going to be handy when you're hitting low tide, either coming in or going out, and you're going to have to ship your trolling motor anyway. And that brings up the next point. This motor will run shallower than a traditional trolling motor. My traditional motor wanted to be at least six inches below my hull, ideally 12 inches, whereas this runs just fine, pretty much even with the bottom of my hull, maybe a little bit below it. This is a very light system, and I can install it back in my driveway, leave it on while I'm driving, and then it's ready to go when I get into the water. So you can see how it sits on the back of my truck and does not interfere with the loading or the transport. So a lot of trade-offs you got to go through when you're considering the investment that this motor is going to require. Now I'm using my own battery, so if you're considering buying it, you don't have to invest in a new battery. But of course, this is an expensive high-end system, so you're going to have to make your own call of the benefits of this versus what your specific requirements are. That's it for this test. Now I need to get my legs in shape because I won't be using this trolling motor all the time. I need to do a couple miles around the lake here. Let me pull this thing up. And I guess maybe this is another example right here of how easy it is to deal with obstructions. One hand that I can pull this up, get rid of the seaweed, and I'm good to go. I like it. If you've got the money and you want the critical features, especially this ability to turn on a dime, well, this is the motor for you. Your comments? Throw them down below. Thanks.